My name is Dina Arvanitakis. I was born and raised in Chicago, and I moved down here in 2000. I, uh, I went to the University of Chicago for undergrad. I also went to the John Marshall Law School where I got my JD, and I also have a Master's of Law in International Business and Trade Law. I moved to Florida, um, and I, uh, I, uh, been practicing, I've been an attorney for 22 years doing real estate, probate, estate planning, and elder law. Uh, when I am not an attorney, I am an author, speaker, blogger, and now I'm following my passion and turning it into a business. Uh, feel and look fabulous, because a healthy you is a fabulous you. <laughs> so what is health? Dr. Joe, a couple of weeks ago, Ask the definition, what is health? And it really is the absence of illness and injury impairing the body's ability to function and heal. And that can encompass a lot of things. It can encompass mental, it can encompass physical, uh, lifestyle wellness. Well, for the sake of my presentation, I'm gonna focus on nutritional wellness. The absence of illness and injury. Ideally, this should be your lifespan. From the time you're born until you die, you were created to live a life without pain, illness, and suffering. Next. But when we focus on illness and then injury, somewhere in your timeline called life, something happens. There's a blip on your screen. And unfortunately, people reach a point where they do not feel good anymore and people's lives get disrupted with illness or disease. <coughs> so, the Western model of medicine, the minute you hit that bleep on your life screen, we have this philosophy that there must be a pill for every ill. And doctors are not properly trained on nutrition or functional medicine, but they sure know how to write a prescription, like it's candy. <clears throat> and the problem with that is, you give a prescription, you mask the symptom, you manage the sick client, but that client never heals. They keep getting sicker and sicker. Yes, you put a band-aid, maybe you don't feel that symptom anymore, but as your life progresses, and you haven't really addressed what caused this to begin with, you're going to need, sometime down the road, whether it's one year or five years or ten years, you're going to need pill number B, pill B to address pill A for the symptoms that this side effect, uh, this pill caused in side effects. So you put a few more band-aids, but as you get older, you never address this, you never address this, and then you end up here as you get older. And what, we, what doctors like to do is just put band-aids. They don't care about healing. It's the sick, perpetual client. And there's a lot of money to be made. So you keep getting sicker and sicker, and this is the problem. Obviously, it's economic burden, not only in your household, but on a national level. We have this Medicare crisis. You become less productive, your quality of life diminishes, you become more isolated and sedentary. As you get sicker and sicker, you don't have the energy to go out. And what really sucks is that you miss out on making memories. You don't play with your grandkids because you're tired or this hurts or that hurts. You worked all your life to save money for that dream vacation. But by the time you're able to go there, you're too sick to travel or you're in a wheelchair or you have dialysis or something happens and you never reach that dream. You're not making memories. You're just living, taking pills. This, folks, is not normal. We're not supposed to age like this. But unfortunately, people are either trained or brainwashed to believe that this is just a part of getting older. And I'm here to say it doesn't have to be that way. So I'm not against medicine. There is a time and place for it. It can save lives. 
And here in America, we're number one in emergency medicine. This can have, you know, this happens and this saves lives. But to have a pharmacy in your house taking pills every day, that's not normal. So to understand how you got into this little uh, distraction in your life or disruption, you need to understand and really look what have you been doing from the time you were born until you first noticed you have a problem. This is what people should be thinking about, doctors should be asking about and addressing. So when you're born, think of yourself as an empty cup, your clean slate, and think of these drops of water as a salt that you do to your body. And I'll, I'll give you a picture of what an assault looks like. It could be uh, toxic chemicals, it could be poor food choices, but when you're young, you keep filling that cup that you were born with, but you don't know you have a problem, because it's still right here. And here's some grand examples of assaults. It's food that cause inflammation. It's donuts, which this isn't even considered a food. It's colors, it's sugar, it's sodas, it's refined carbohydrates, bad oils that can, that can kill you and cause cancer, and artificial colors and preservatives. This, these are the grand offenders. This is Dr. Jockers, one of my favorite doctors that I like to follow. Uh, the most deadliest things that you can um, eat on a daily basis, if you could just scroll up a little bit. Artificial sweeteners, which can cause a long-term brain damage, and in some cases, even blindness and migraines, high processed vegetable oils and seed oils like corn oil, canola oil, palm oil, cotton seed oil, worst offenders, food additives and preservatives, trans fats, partially hydrogenated oils, processed conventional meats like when you buy a sandwich, those meats are unclean. You're better off just getting a turkey, roasting it, slicing it, and putting it in a sandwich. Farm-raised fish and seafood, are they're raised in filthy conditions with chemicals, colors, and antibiotics. Conventionally raised meat, uh, you know, cows that are given corn and grain to eat, God made them to eat grass, not corn, which is genetically modified, by the way. Um, refined carbohydrates, things that break down quickly into sugar like pasta. Uh, sugar, of course, uh, these two, by the way, are cancer feeders, and gluten. I don't care whether you're sensitive to gluten or not, gluten causes leaky gut syndrome, which I'd be happy to talk to you about later, which then opens the door to autoimmune disease. You can actually train your body to develop rheumatoid arthritis by continually uh, eating gluten uh, products. So, as you see these examples of assault, you're right about here, you still don't know you've got a problem. But it takes this one more drop to put you over the tipping point. And then you start to spill over. And this is when you start to feel lousy and something's not right. Some people do it slowly by slow drips. Some people make poor choices every single day, and they fire hose themselves uh, and speed up their process into illness. So, we know in life, we know in business, actions have consequences. When you become nutrient deficient and or toxic, you get sick. When you disrupt the balance of your microbiome, which is the bacteria in your gut, you get sick. 
When you consistently assault your body with inflammatory foods, you get sick. When you consistently overeat, snack all day, you become insulin resistant, you get sick. If you do not find constructive ways to deal with your stress, you get sick. If you live a sedentary lifestyle, you get sick. So why do we get sick, folks? Because your body doesn't look like this. There's no fences in your body. You disrupt your microbiome with inflammatory foods, like sugar, gluten, trans fats, preservatives, chemicals, toxins. The inflammation will spill over and affect all body systems, starting with the liver, your kidneys, your stomach, your brain, and everything else. So your microbiome and your, is, your gut here is really your second brain. They communicate constantly through the vagus nerves. So health, folks, doesn't start from here down. It starts from your head to your toes. You need to protect this so all of this can work well. So, God designed you to heal. When you were a kid and you fell off your bike and you scraped your knee, what did you do to make that knee better? Did you actually create new skin? No, your body took care of it on its own. Your stem cells went in there and created new skin under your skin. You didn't do anything. Your body took care of it. So, nutrition has a direct effect on how your body functions and heals. Since the 1980s, there's been emerging science called epigenetics, which means it doesn't matter what your genes are. You can have good and bad genes. We all can. But nutrition has the power to turn on or off those bad genes. So you really do have more control than you think. It's not, oh, it's in my genes, or oh, poor me, oh, there's nothing I can do. There's absolutely a lot that you can do. You have ultimate destiny over your health. So epigenetics, if you're interested, Google it. It's, it's, it's fascinating. So if you stop eating inflammatory foods and replace it with a blue